I'm your host, Peter Komandowski, and welcome to Surviving Bad, where we explore Iowa stories of survival, hope, and inspiration. Today, we're talking about traffic safety and life on the road, which for Iowans and all Americans is especially important. The roads are a lifeline of connections, a necessity that gives us the opportunity to work, learn, and play. Yet being on the road can be one of the most dangerous undertakings of our lives. Our guests today from the Iowa Department of Public Safety, Brett Chepkes and Troy Bailey, are going to talk about the facts and how we can work together to keep our roadways safe. Welcome to the show, gentlemen, starting with you, Brett. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're here. Uh, thank you, Peter. Um, as you said, my name is Brett Jepkes. I'm the Bureau Chief of the Governor's Traffic Safety Bureau. Um, I've been involved in traffic safety my entire adult life uh, with a career with the Iowa State Patrol, uh, continue on in various uh, other capacities within the Department of Public Safety before coming here to the Governor's Traffic Safety Bureau. Uh, what we do is we par partner with city, county, and state uh, agencies to try to reduce the number of serious crashes and fatalities on Iowa's roadways. We do that by, by supporting them with information, data, funding, um, and uh, uh, you know, really uh, the whole goal is to um, try to reduce the number of uh, deaths that are on Iowa's roadways and so people can enjoy their lives here in Iowa. And Troy. Well, thanks, Peter. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, as you say, my name is Troy Bailey. I'm a captain with the Iowa State Patrol, and I currently serve as the assistant field operations officer for the department. Um, one of my primary duties is, is to focus on traffic safety and not only focus on it from our department, but to work collectively with the other agencies in the state of Iowa um, and figure out what we can do moving forward as a group uh, to, to drive, drive down those traffic fatalities. What, what can we do to educate and create buy-in um, in the public to, to change driving behavior for the better? And that's our ultimate goal. And that's, that's our hope is it's going to reduce those traffic fatalities. Well, and you've had some pretty aggressive goals to reduce fatalities. Uh, Brett, what have some of the results been? What have we seen happen in the last few years? Well, um, in the last few years, we're starting to actually tick a little upwards uh, for the total number of fatalities. You know, that being said, we've, we've made a lot of gains uh, here in Iowa and really across the country uh, since the 70s and 80s. There were uh, larger numbers, uh, upwards around 1,000 people here in Iowa that, uh, that were killed in traffic crashes. And uh, last year, it was 354. Uh, so we're starting to see an influx of more vehicles, more uh, congestion, uh, that uh, you know make it a little more challenging for us. Uh, but that being said, and, and a little bit like uh, what Troy said, is that uh, you know we partner with the Department of Transportation and uh, National Traffic uh, Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and so there's been you know a lot of uh, roadway engineering that improves safety, a lot of vehicle technology that improves safety. Uh, what we primarily focus on at the Governor's Traffic Safety Bureau, and I know with the Iowa State Patrol, is is trying to influence that driver behavior. Um, so. Uh, even though we've ticked just a little bit uh, upwards, uh, we're really hopeful that uh, that we can change the direction of that uh, that trend and 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 start back uh, kind of downward. Um, you know, there there aren't any of these crashes that are acceptable to us. You know, for many of our viewers, where, where the bad analogy, but where the rubber meets the road is where you actually get a ticket or you you meet somebody in the act of public safety. You know, it's been for me a, quite an evolution from thinking about avoiding the police while I'm driving to now feeling better when I know that someone's out there because that slows everybody down. Because I know that I'm personally at risk if somebody is driving erratically or distracted or too fast. But that's not necessarily uh, the way most people feel about enforcement. Well, what, what are you learning out there, Troy, that, you know, about enforcement? And is, is the climate actually changing for, for public safety officers? Well, it has, I think, over the last few years, and it has changed. The climate has changed. Now, some could say it's changed uh, for the worse, some for the better, and, and it depends on where you look at that. Um, but from our perspective, that never changes our mission and what we, we need to try to do out there. Um, nothing will change that. We need to approach each day with the mindset that we can make a positive impact. We can make a difference, and that's truly what it's about. Um, you alluded to it a little bit, Peter, that, uh, you know, when you're out there driving and you see a law enforcement officer, um, you have a reaction. Oh, okay. Do I need to slow down or do I need to do something? That's a positive impact. 
you know, if, if that's happening without even a, a law enforcement contact, that's a good thing. You know, uh, that just officer presence, as we say, serves as a deterrent to bad driving behavior. Um, unfortunately, if we want to talk a little bit of numbers uh, over the last couple of years, and starting with the pandemic, uh, we saw a huge uptick in egregious speed violations. Uh, speeding has always been an issue. It's always been out there, but the last couple of years, we've seen a huge uptick. Um, just the Iowa State Patrol in 2020 issued 1,497 citations for speed light violations over 100 miles per hour. Um, that's, that's an alarming trend, and that's nearly double the previous year. So we've got to figure out how we combat that and bring that down. That's a really interesting point. I want to take a short break, but I want to come back to that afterwards. So stay tuned with us. We're going to continue our conversation with Brett and Troy. You don't want to miss this. The black truck. Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna call a car. That's a smart idea. So yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're gonna get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm gonna get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. While a lot is changing in our world, at Mediacom, our focus remains the same. Making sure you have the fastest, most reliable connection possible. During this critical time, we know your needs are changing. You may be working or learning from home, relying on telemedicine, or finding new ways to keep everyone entertained. If you need more speed, call or go online, and Mediacom will double your speed immediately for as low as $10 more a month for one year. Welcome back to Surviving Bad. I'm your host, Peter Komandowski, and we're talking about traffic safety and the professionals dedicated to keeping the road safe for you and your family. It's a big job, and there's a lot of numbers involved. Brett, share a little bit of the numbers that will give us an understanding of, of how you look at the world through the eyes of traffic safety. Yeah, thank you, Peter. You know, uh, you know everything that we do here, we, we are data-driven. Uh, so all of our programs, we're, we're going to the areas that, uh, that there are problems. We're dedicating, you know, our resources to problem areas. Uh, you know, as far as people dying on Iowa's roadways, I indicated earlier that, you know, in Iowa, we're, we're ticking up a little bit. Um, and so in, in 2018, uh, 319 people lost their lives. And then from there, each year it went up uh, 337 to 343 to 354 people that lost their lives uh, on Iowa roads from traffic crashes just last year. Um, and so, uh, you know, we look at all these numbers, we wanna reverse that trend. We want as many people to, to enjoy life as, as possible. Uh, that's our mission here. Um, and so some of the other things we look at are, are what's, what are causing these crashes? So where do we need to devote our attention? Uh, we know that 75 of the 354 uh, were speeding related, driving too fast. You know, there's less reaction time um, and, uh, uh, you know, less time to, to see what uh, could possibly uh, cause an issue for your driving down the road. Uh, reactions are, are, are slowed. Um, and then 94 of the 354 weren't wearing their seatbelt, which, you know, th that's an alarming number. We have a high seatbelt usage rate uh, in Iowa to where a lot of people do wear their seatbelts since that law was instituted. Uh, boy, I think that was back around 1990 uh, that we've had that law. Uh, but, but 94, of the 354, uh, we're not wearing their seatbelts last year. Uh, you know that is that is the one thing that uh, that people could do that would really, um, you know, save their life if they were involved in a crash is is buckling up and and, and slowing down. So those two things are really those two things that uh, uh, that make up a big portion of the people that that were killed last year. Troy, you're out there in the field and you see a lot of different things. What? what... What do we need to know that maybe from your side of the world as drivers, as just people that we don't know or we don't get? Well, I, I think the biggest thing is, is that when we get into a vehicle, we need to just 
just stop and, and think a minute about what we're going to do. You know, um, what, what can we do? We live in such a fast paced world um, where we're constantly on the go. Uh, we, we're constantly moving. We're, we're trying to get from point A to point B in the most expeditious manner. And, you know, we've got busy schedules, busy lives. Uh, the biggest thing that we need people to do is just just take that deep breath take a pause. Okay. When you get behind the wheel, think about the impact that you as that driver of that vehicle. And you talked about it, Peter, about this multi-thousand pound vehicle heading down the road. You're in control of that. And you're not only affecting your life, uh, you're affecting those around you. And so my biggest thing is I'd like to see people um, just, just take a minute, think about what they're doing. Think about consequences for actions. Um, whether they're intended or, or not, uh, there's always going to be consequences, uh, for things we do, uh, if we do them wrong. So take that, that pause. Uh, we've heard it in law enforcement. You know, we've heard all the excuses in the world. Um, you know, I'm running late. I didn't know I was speeding. Uh, I'm just keeping up with traffic. All those things. We hear those day in and day out. Um, now, whether they have some validity to some of those or not, it still doesn't take away from the fact that you're speeding, you know, you're creating a hazard out there. So take that time to think about what you're doing and think about how you impact those people around you. Brett, when you think about impacts and, and in the role that you're in, what, what do you see the factors that you're measuring that like buttons that you know that if you can push, we can really help save lives? You know, well, I guess I alluded to it uh, just a little bit earlier that that, that speeding and, and seatbelt um, you know, one thing we're focused on is really being as efficient as we can with our programs here at, at the Governor's Traffic Safety Bureau. Uh, we know from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, from, from published research, that high visibility traffic enforcement to, is really uh, the most effective countermeasure, one of the most effective countermeasures to, to change driver behavior. So unfortunately, getting a traffic citation is really what, what needs to happen to change driver behavior in, in, in a lot of circumstances. Um, and so from our standpoint, point, we're trying to increase that. We're trying to devote that to, to these traffic problems. Um, we want to change driver behavior, and that means that, it, that a driver's going to have to get a, a traffic citation. Um, then, then, then so be it. That's what we need to do. You know, we couple that with education and awareness. Um, you know, we, we partner with, with research, but uh, really what we're looking for is, is that uh, – uh, the effective countermeasures, what we know will change drivers' behavior, and that and that's why, you know, we partner with agencies like the Iowa State Patrol, uh, sheriffs departments across the state, city police departments. Uh, you know, they're they're our, um, you know, most trusted partners that uh, uh, that we use for that manner. Well, and thank you for partnering with us to help get the message out too. We're going to take a short break, and and when we're going to ask you to come back and maybe share some stories together. You guys have a lot of experience firsthand. Maybe there's some stories in there that will reinforce the importance of the work that you do for those of us that are interested in knowing how we can enjoy our life on the road a little bit safer. Stay tuned. We'll see you after the break. You don't want to miss this. Today, more than ever, you need fast, reliable internet. At Mediacom, we want you to know you can count on us. Our fiber-powered 100% gigabit technology network was built for the future. We have enormous capacity and power and 99.99% network reliability. So even though these are uncertain times, we're prepared. And you can be certain we'll keep your world connected. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? Why? My. Oh. <laughs> no, you can't. Welcome back to Surviving Bad. We're talking with Brett and Troy about the connections our road provides for us and the importance of 
all of our actions related to safety, whether you work with the State Patrol and public safety or every one of us when we get in our car. Now, together, you guys bring a lot of experience to the table. Many years serving Iowans, and just like us, you know, we're not, we may not be in a uniform. I know, Brett, you were spent many years in a uniform. Um, and, and life can be difficult sometimes with uniforms. You know, the media is tough. But for the most part, and I work with kids in schools and with people, we have a lot of respect for the work you do. But you've had to overcome a lot of adversity, and you've probably also had a lot of high points. What are some of the stories you can look back on in your life that really make you feel good about what yourself and what you do? Well, you know, um, I took this job, and I know Brett took this job, and I don't want this to sound cliche, but to make it a difference. Um, and, and that is true. And I always reinforce with our with our troopers out there that each day they have the ability to make a positive impact and they may not know that, um, but they do, you know, they may look at that as just a routine part of their job day in and day out that they, that they go about their business and, and, you know, kind of take for granted the impact that they can make in a good way. And even if it's just that conversation with people, not even just a traffic stop, but just having that conversation, it stops and makes people think. Um, I can probably think of a lot. I know I can, I can come up with probably thousands of stories of, you know, what really reinforced what we do and made me feel good about myself when I went home at the end of the day. But I'll, I'll share one that sticks out in mind. Um, and this was, uh, this was several years ago. I stopped this gentleman for a speed violation, pretty significant via speed violation, um, on a, on a County blacktop. Uh, wasn't an interstate or anything, but he was traveling at a high rate of speed. Uh, during the course of the stop, as I talked to him, um, he had two of his children in, in the vehicle with him. And through the course of the stop, I, I began to notice that uh, the gentleman had, had some alcohol coming from him. I could, I could detect that odor of alcohol coming from him. And so obviously followed up with an investigation of roadside impairment and you know, unfortunately, here's a gentleman that was over the legal limit, uh, more than twice the legal limit for blood alcohol concentration, and had his three year old and five year old children with him. And so you look at the combination of the speed and the impairment that we had there. And the fact that this gentleman not only put his his life in danger and those in other vehicles around, but his two children that had no control over anything, he directly put their life in jeopardy. Fortunately, uh, you know, it worked out. Uh, we were able to, to get him off the roadway, uh, get the children in a safe environment, um, and in my mind, hopefully prevented a tragedy. And I think the one interesting follow-up on that, Peter, is uh, I actually received a call from that gentleman uh, about a month later. And thanking me for what I did, he, you know, and he says, I, I made a bad choice in life. It was a terrible choice that looking back now, I realized what could have happened and, and fortunately done. So that brought home some, some reinforcement, I guess, from my perspective that, Hey, we're, we're doing good things out here and we can't make an impact. Yeah, it might be more of a case when, when we get pulled over, which happens to some of us, maybe rarely, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> You know, we should say thank you and not have an excuse because maybe it's a reminder that that little bit of behavioral adjustment that would be, you know, whether it's a ticket or, or just a warning that, that has a huge impact on life saving. Now, let's talk about, Brett, do you have an idea of based on the speed limit and five miles over, 10 miles over, you know, there's that zone where people think, oh, if I go five over, I'm not going to get a ticket. But how much more deadly is that extra five or 10 miles an hour? You know, boy, Peter, you know, I, I really uh, try to focus on data and public research uh, and published research. And I don't think I have anything, you know, really on that. But, you know, those speed limits have been determined by people, you know, based on that research. Uh, and so, you know, when, when it's a speed limit, uh, you know, that's it. That's maximum. And so anything over that is going to be more dangerous. Anything over that, uh, you know, increases your stopping distance. It uh, you know reduces your time to perceive danger to be able to react to it. Uh, you know, we look at all kinds of things on how long it takes to perceive and react. And and when you're going 50 mi five miles per hour, you're you're talking about uh, you know a football field before you're even able to 
put your foot on the brake to start to slow down. You know, that's that's a big difference when, or a big distance when when you're looking at that. So, you know, the faster you're going, the 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 longer it's going to take for you to avoid a crash or avoid an obstacle um, that's on the road. And so, um, you know, going any any uh, faster than the speed limit, uh, uh, really, I wouldn't recommend it. It's just too dangerous. You know, I, I get to meet a lot of people that work with different mental health challenges and issues that are out there. And some of them become when somebody drinks and drives, you know, the, the, when you do have issues, high risk behavior tends to happen more often. And so there's a lot of effort put into relaxation and calming and staying focused and being mindful of what you're doing. And I tell you what, based on what you're saying, I can attest to the fact that if you set your speed control on your car to the speed limit, it's much more relaxing driving than even than five over. I mean, you feel like, hey, this is it's my road now. <laughs> I'm following the law. Everything's good. Pay attention. You're good. But the minute you crank up over a little bit, the first thing you think about is finding one of you on the side of the road <laughs> and keeping your eyes open. So maybe for all of us, it should just be a relaxation technique to drive the speed limit more than anything else. Anyway, I'd like to take a short break and invite you guys back to share some final comments, insights, and advice with our viewers. Hey, you all stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. We'll see you after the break. Every second, 127 new devices connect to the internet. You can feel it happening. Our digital world expanding with every breath. We're entering a whole new era of connectivity and Mediacom will be ready to power it. With one of the nation's first 10G platforms, we'll be bringing you more speed, more capacity, more security, and the power to do more than you ever dreamed possible. Whether it's advice on managing your anxiety or tools to help you stay grounded, Coping 19 provides a range of resources and self-care tips to help you cope with this pandemic. We can help. Find the resources that work best for you at coping-19.org. Welcome back. Today on Surviving Bad, we're talking about traffic safety and the professionals dedicated to keeping our roads safe. It's a big job. The numbers don't lie. They're making a difference and saving lives. Let's see what our guests, Brett and Troy, have to share with us. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. You know, I find it amazing. During the break, you said that virtually 100% of crashes and even probably traffic tickets speeding are all avoidable. Brett, tell us more about that. Yeah, you know that, that that's right, Peter. Is um, you know, we, uh, kind of the uh, the example that we talked about was winter driving conditions. You know, uh, um, you know, I spent a career with the Iowa State Patrol before coming here to the Governor's Traffic Safety Bureau, and and I can't tell you how many times I well, it wasn't my fault. The roadway was icy. Um, well, you know, the speed limit is intended for when under ideal conditions. Um, you know, if it's raining, reduced visibility. If the roadways are icy or snowy. Uh, then that, that speed limit, it needs to be reasonable and proper for the conditions that, that are there. And so um, if that's the case, then we have to drive below the posted speed limit if, if the roadway is icy and you can't stop, you know, or we need to follow advisories uh, from agencies like the Iowa State Patrol says travel not recommended. Well, that means that the, the roadways are bad. You shouldn't be out there. You might be involved in a crash if you go out there. Um, and so, yeah, those, those things are avoidable. Um, you know, reducing distractions. We talked a little bit of that over the break also, you know, uh, you know, putting that phone down and, and, and just concentrating on driving is, is absolutely necessary. Um, since 2012 for commercial motor vehicles or semi drivers, it's been the law for them. You know, they, they can't be even holding on to a cell phone while they're driving that, that big truck. Um, and so, you know, we believe it should be that way for, for drivers of all vehicles. You know, Troy, I, I know that, the times that I personally experienced getting pulled over, there's a sense of deep regret. It's like, oh, what a bummer. I could have, I know I could have avoided it. I could have gone slower. Um, what's sort of the range of emotions you run into with people? Do you, do you see that happening a lot? 
You do. Uh, and, and, and oftentimes emotions run high in those circumstances. And, you know, emotions could have been running high before the stop. And therein lies the issue and why we're brought together is because uh, people really didn't have control of their emotions um, and really let their their sound uh, sound safety rules kind of get away from them, you know, when they operate that vehicle. Um, they've lost focus. They've lost concentration on what they're doing. And that's led to our encounter with law enforcement, which, you know, most people think that's a bad thing. At the end of the day, it's not. It's, it's, a, it's a good thing. And because we're here to change that behavior for the better. Um, that's a big thing that I would ask people to do is when you get behind the wheel, check your emotions, put your emotions aside take that deep breath. You could have had a bad day or just come out of a bad meeting, had a rough day at work, get behind the wheel, take that deep breath and think, okay, I'm, I'm taking on a new responsibility, driving this car down the road. Um, and I've got a lot of people around me that, that I'm responsible for, uh, because of my actions. So take that time, think about what you're doing. Don't get complacent. Um, know that you can have an impact into Brett's, to Brett's, uh, talking points, you can control all this. These are things that are not out of your control. Uh, they're things that you can control to, to make everybody safer. And, and that's what ultimately what we're looking for. Well, you know, if everybody pays a lot of money for a yoga instructor, a spin class instructor, a life coach. And, you know, this is, and it's important to me, mindful of everything you do. And you guys are sort of like free coaches for us here at getting into a car, more mindful, more relaxed, and stay within the limits. You know, this is advice we're hearing everywhere. And it's probably becoming more relevant today than ever before. Brett, a final comment before we take off for the day. Well, I sure appreciate the time for us to share this message. And so thank you uh, for having us on. You know, I, I think it's it's just the point, slow down, put the phone down, buckle up, don't drive while you're impaired by either drugs or alcohol. And if you do those things, there's a very good chance that you're gonna survive, very good chance you're not gonna be in a crash, take somebody else's life. Uh, and uh, um, and really can in, enjoy a, a good life like we all expect here in Iowa. And uh, um, and so I buckle up, slow down, put the phone down, um, and don't drive impaired. Thank you so very much for helping us out today, and thank you all for joining us. Check out our website at healthyiowa.org for more information, and keep your eye on Mediacom MC22 for our next episode of Surviving Bad, where we talk about Iowa stories of survival, hope, and inspiration on Mediacom MC22, your local programming leader. Thank you.